and I can guarantee you by having all these areas in your playroom you will give yourself hours of independent playtime. Hi guys, my name is Julie. I'm a mom of two boys, Ezra who is two years old and Levi who is 10 months old. We live in Australia and I'm a firm believer in play-based learning. So if you share that belief with me or if you want to learn more, please hit the subscribe button and let's create an amazing community of playful families together. All right guys, let's jump right into this video and talk about the areas that in my humble opinion, every playroom needs. Now, a little disclaimer here, I'm not saying that all the areas that I'm mentioning have to be present in the playroom or the play area at all times. And I'm not saying that one area has to be allocated to on one space only. It can be multiple of spaces depending on your child's age and your child's interest. Okay, so number one, I think it's one of the most important areas. It's a gross mortar area. So I know it might be surprising to some, but when kids are moving, when they're jumping, when they're sliding, when they're hanging on the monkey bars, they're actually learning so much and all kids have that internal need to express that energy and to put it out there and to use it up throughout the day. So having a gross mortar area allocated in your home where they can do it safely is perfect. Now, there are actually many different things you can get for a gross motor area, depending on how much space you have, what's your budget, etc. Uh, my top favorites would be a Picklet Triangle with a slide. I'd highly recommend getting one with a slide and as large as you can, so it can last for many, many years. And a thing called the Nugget. Now, if you haven't heard about the Nugget, it's basically a kid's couch it's so cool i don't have one because we're from australia but i know a lot of people in the us who have it who love it it's um so again it's basically a couch that comes apart it's big foamy pillows that kids can jump on you can change its transfiguration and put the pillows different ways and create little houses you can create a couch you can uh, just create a jumping space you know it's all great. So they're both pretty high ticket item, but they would last you a long time. Number two on my list, also essential in my opinion, is something for building, a construction space, a building space. And you can also use many different things for it, many different materials. My uh, top recommendation would be wooden unit blocks. They are fantastic. They teach kids about math. They teach kids about geometry, they teach imagination, they help kids create their own little worlds. It's really amazing. Now, a good set of wooden unit blocks, I would definitely consider an investment, but kids can start playing with it before they're one and up until elementary school and beyond. Some other options for building could be Lego sets, like Duplos for littler kids and uh, proper Legos for older kids. They're all great. They're all very educational and they all teach our kids so, so much about this world. Okay, number three area that you need in your playroom is a small world area. And this has to be my favorite. I absolutely love it. I love setting them up. I love our little animals and I love creating little worlds. So for this one, you don't need a lot. You do need um, an allocated space where you can create it. It can be a shelf, it can be a tub, it can be a table like what we have, it can be a coffee table, it doesn't have to be anything special. You also need some figurines that uh, kids can manipulate. So a uh, good one is animal figurines. Another great one to have is some people figurines. They can be as realistic as you want them to be I know a lot of people love little peg people from Grappa uh, because they can actually be anything. They can be any character. The child sees the color and he can associate it with one of the characters that he likes. Along with it, I would definitely recommend some things to set up the scenery and they can be uh, as simple as you want them to be. They can be just a few branches of the trees. They can be rocks you found outside. They can be little scarves or play silks that would uh, represent the water, the earth, uh, the sand, 
They can be rolled out Play-Doh, that's a great one too. Your imagination is the limit. You can use anything and there are so many things that can work as a scenery for your little small world. Okay, number four, I love this one as well. I think I love all of them, <laughs> but um, this one is a reading nook and it doesn't have to be anything special, but what it has to have is books that are within the reach of a child. So he can choose what he wants to read. You can look at the pictures, uh, look at the images. You will encourage them to read more and reading is absolutely the best activity for literacy at young age. So we have various nooks around the house. One of the cubes in our cube shelf that we have in the playroom is allocated for board books. Another area we have is two spice racks from Ikea. Uh, they're very cheap, very easy to install, so you don't need to invest much. Lastly, we have a little cube with a door uh, in our living room where Ezra can come up, uh, he can open the door himself and choose a book he wants to read. And I have to admit that the books that are behind the door get read so much less than the books that are out on the shelves. It's incredible what visual stimulation can do to a child. But I really encourage you to, to find a way to present books in a beautiful way in your home to ignite the interest of a child for reading. Okay, the next area, number five, is a sensory area. The benefits of the sensory play areas have been well documented and uh, it's just amazing what it can do to a child, how much the child can learn and how important it is for them. I'm so excited to see how many great ideas mums come up with to engage with their children and to show them different tactile experiences. The sensory areas, they don't need to be anything fancy. When you go out to a park, there's a sandpit. Kids play in the sandpit, that's a sensory play area. If you go to a forest, the kids play in a big pile of leaves, that's a sensory play area. And if you go to the lake, or even take them to the bath, that's a great sensory experience for them too. Now, what I have decided to set up in my home is a flesat table from Ikea. I love it. It has two tubs, so you can put different things. You can put um, two sensory materials in both. You can put tools in one or animals or vehicles. So something to play with. And then in the other one, you can keep the sensory material. Okay, moving on. The next area that I really encourage you to have in your home is an area for puzzles. Now it doesn't have to be the traditional jigsaw puzzle or the peg puzzle, although those are great, both great options, depending on what level your child is at. Uh, but it's also just for something that would stimulate that logical, mathematical thinking. Uh, and uh, yeah, puzzles come in all different forms, shapes, sizes, and all different budgets. Uh, for Australians, Kmart has a lot of fantastic options and they're only like a couple dollars each. I love to rotate our puzzles uh, and I get them from the toy library. So if you have one in your town, I would highly recommend uh, maybe checking it out. The next area is arts and crafts. Now my kids, I have two boys again, they're pretty young, they're not very artsy, not very craftsy. So because it's not a big area for us yet, I have decided to leave it in um, with the craft area. So again, our Flissart IKEA table is what I have allocated for that. We can do arts and crafts at the table and it's worked perfect for us. It saves space. You definitely do not need a separate space for every area that I'm mentioning. All right, so the next area I encourage you to have in your playroom is a musical area. Music is just, it's just good for our soul. It's great, it's fun. And a lot of people that have real talent to music and if your child is one of them I really highly recommend having a musical area to play with so you can see that interest and you can act on it for little kids it's pretty simple pretty basic there's not a lot you can get what we have we have different rattles we have different play instruments we have xylophone and we have an electronic piano which is not fantastic but it works um, so we just have that in the basket available to them at all times and also what we do is we love singing nursery rhymes. 
you don't have to be a singer so don't let this stop you I'm a pretty bad singer we love singing though and my kids love it my older boy two-year-old he learns so much he learns so much vocabulary from it and my younger boy he actually enjoys music so much I can already see it at 10 months old so I really do promote having uh, that available for them now the last area I have for you today that I think you should have in your playroom is a dramatic play area now what that is it's just acting out scenes from real life or not real life whatever you want uh, so you can have different setups of say a doctor's office or a fire station and you can act it out with your kids or with your kids to act it out by themselves or together if you have multiple children or when their friends come around it's really it's only more fun when there's more kids engaged in the play one great thing you can have for a dramatic play area is a play kitchen we don't have one I don't see my kids to show an interest in it when we go to play groups they don't really play with it so I have decided to skip on that one but I know most kids love it uh, most girls seem to gravitate towards it uh, and um, cook in the kitchen or sell things if they have some play food there some people decide to put uh, an actual real snacks and turn it into a practical life activity as well as a play kitchen which is also great there's a lot of different setups you can get like a little market a little shop or a little doctor's office and different things like that but what I would encourage you to do is not get a specific setup for just one play but get something more open-ended and I will show you an example our rocker I actually got it thinking it could be a little shop it could be a little camping tent it could be a little bridge of the river so what I encourage you to do is get something non-specific even the cube shelves like we have in the playroom uh, if I wouldn't have the rocker, I would probably get a 2x2 two two cube shelf and then you can put different things in it and pretend that that is a market stall or that is a cashier or that is a doctor's office and um, you can just think of ways how to decorate it each week or each fortnight, each toy rotation and then you can use it in a multitude of ways and that would last you a lot a lot longer all right so that's it guys we've covered all the areas we've talked about the whole playroom and the, all the things that i personally think that you should have in it uh thank you so much for watching this video for sticking to the end you get the playful mama word comment down below which area is your favorite one and which one you would like to see a separate video on because i do plan on doing some of them separately